Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Uh, we're coming at you on February 17th, 2021. Um, <clears throat> all kinds of interesting stuff in the news. But before we get into that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word, Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. Uh, he is a retired engineer in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So let's jump right into the news. So uh, one of the sort of bait and switches that we're running into with the Biden administration right away is, you know, we heard all this talk about getting back to normal, maybe 100 days of masks was his big plan, I guess, that he unveiled as he, you know, to deal with COVID and, and you know, we were going to be sort of home free. And now all of a sudden he's talking about, uh, you know, essentially kids' education is non-essential <laughs> in his, in his uh, administration. You know, we're essentially hearing that, you know, they're hoping that I think within, uh, what is it, uh, 90 days or 100 days or something, they will have uh, kids back to school for one day a week. One day. Uh, Imagine that. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's just uh, uh, unbelievable. I mean, it's beyond the pale. I mean, talk about the biggest transfer of wealth ever from one category of, of people to another. And in this case, it's from kids to uh, anybody in the at-risk group, essentially, because they are taking away their education. I mean, years of the kids' lives and formative of when they gain their skills so that they can go out there and actually earn something more than minimum wage <laughs> instead of having to have the government dictate it to them. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this? It just disgusts me to no end uh, what they're doing mm. with kids' education. Well, I know, and you, and you got... You got kids, you know, Jason. Yeah. So I could, I, I really feel your pain on this one. I really do. Yeah. You know, you know. The point is, though, it always amazes me how the left does take words, normal words, words with normal people, and I have to use that expression. Sorry, pardon me. Normal people will hear these words and they will think one thing when the the left have some secret plan as to what they really mean. Biden spoke about reopening school and every and his press secretary came out very early after the inauguration and talk about reopening schools so everybody thought reopening schools mean reopening schools who the hell would have thought reopening school now means one day a week but you see what happens what is happening this uh woman who's the head of the cdc she came out and said very clearly that the schools can reopen, there's no significant risk to the teachers, and they, they do not have to be vaccinated before they go back to school. But then, I am sure this happened in the background. Somebody in the teachers' unions pick up the phone and tell Biden and tell his press secretary, listen, okay, that is not how it's gonna go. So all of a sudden, even the head of the CDC with the science at her back, is not backtracking. Oh, we have to be careful. Oh, we have to um, we have to be sure all every everything is in place. We have to show the resources are correct before we can open the schools. She have no back backtrack on her original statement, which was totally correct, which was totally backed by science. But now the politics have taken over. Well, and, the and teachers' so unions is controlling the Democratic Party, and this is what is happening. Our kids are suffering for it. And just to jump in real quick, when you said she backtracked, um, when she first said that, uh, the White House said she wasn't speaking in her official capacity, right. which is crazy. <laughs> I mean, she's, yes. you know, a, yes. when she's speaking to the public as the head of the CDC or or I, I'm not quite sure what her position is, but it's pretty high up in the CDC. She is she's the head of the CDC. the CDC. She has the CDC yeah. now. Okay. So so she's the head of the CDC. She's speaking for the CD, head of the, <laughs> for the CDC, yes. not, not her personal opinion. And then, of course, you saw her them, you know, essentially strong arm her into walking her statement back. But anyways, I, I'll let you guys get back to it. Uh, my only contribution is to remind the left that they have always talked about rich, wealthy corporations uh, getting rich on the backs of the poor, as if the poor were the source of wealth, but they're poor. 
at the same time. I don't get yeah. that, but, uh, but in, in <laughs> but in this case, you can definitely say that that unions and governments are increasing power, and that equals to wealth. Uh, yes, on the backs of the innocent little children that aren't going to school. Yes, and, and yes. You, so you can actually really that is a true statement, and. It's it like Leon said. It's just completely unnecessary and unscientifically uh, backed w with that whole policy of of especially schools. Never mind the whole shutdown thing, but just schools. I mean, if we just yes. talk about that. So anyway, yeah, that's all my. Remember the backs of the poor, yeah. the backs of the children. Same. Well, you know, you know what's what's most appalling about this too is often government and the teachers themselves are coming in and saying who speaks for the kids and that's what we're here to do we're here to oh, speak yeah. for the kids they clearly yes. are not speaking for the kids they're speaking for their own interest they're Selfish, getting paid yeah. they're staying home and oh. the kids are not getting an education and i mean hey you know I, I certainly question the education they were getting prior to the shutdown because oh, these yeah. government yes. monopolized schools but you know, th this is where we really need school choice. This is where school choice would shine because you would have competition in the schools with different models of how to address COVID and the shutdowns and everything else. And so you'd have different schools taking different approaches. That's, that's exactly what we need. But instead it's one size fits all government top down and led by the teachers union. And it just, it, it's, it's terrible. I mean, it's, it's really just criminal and immoral what they're doing. I think I think I think the first word you said is correct. Yeah, criminal. This this is seriously seriously criminal that these people could do this and get away with it. That our kids could be sitting down here, virtually rotting away intellectually, and nobody seems to care. The only thing that's important is what the teachers' union think about all this. But this goes back to a bigger problem that we have spo that we we spoke about on this show previously, is that the government making choices of what is essential and what is not essential. That is the government making choices based on the special interests of their political supporters. And that's what's happening here. And who is suffering for this? Our children, our grandkids. That's who's suffering for this. Not these people who are going to get up and go, go back to their fine estates at night. You know, there's a very good example that's going on right now. Gavin Newsom, the, the esteemed governor of our state, who is supporting the lockdown of the school because the public unions support him. But the public, uh, the public teachers union, the teachers union support him. But you know what he does? He sends his kids. He have school age children. He sends his kids to private school, and they're going to school right now. Is that a school connected to the French Laundry by any chance? <laughs> 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 Is that where the kids get their lunches? You know? <laughs> uh, yes. It might be. It might be. <laughs> uh, well. well. We're being ruled by the ruling class, so there you have it. Yes, yeah. they have they have become they have become our overlords. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. supposed to be our servants, but they have become our overlords, and we are their servants and slaves. Yeah, uh, more, more yeah. of the rules for thee and not for me. But uh, indeed, uh, indeed. Uh, well, anyways, uh, it, 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 this is a little bit of a departure from the uh, uh, education issue, but uh, recently we've had. Uh, a lot of kerfuffle as well about the whole national anthem in sports and it's it's kind of an interesting issue because this uh you know even though it would seem like you know <laughs> you know how important is this you know when we got all these other issues going on like COVID and all that but if you think about it a lot of this uh you know uh, blm protesting and a lot of this other stuff uh you know a lot of this it kind of was sparked uh, initially by issues around the national anthem and sports, you know, all the way back to, you know, Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, you know, uh, uh, ways back. But anyways, um, the, specifically, the, the the biggest thing that just came up recently is uh, Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, recently decided to sort of break ranks with, uh, you know, many of his fellow, I guess, uh, NBA uh, teams and stop playing the national anthem and uh, before games. I'm not sure if they were still playing the black national anthem or not, but, but they stopped playing the national anthem, which is gotten to be kind of a it, it, it there's an interesting history on all that it's it goes back quite a ways to baseball and world war one world war two and such you know that, that this just became sort of a normal thing at sports events to play the national anthem but um that said uh it is interesting sort of a private business decided to stop playing the national anthem and a lot of sort of contention came up about it and then 
the uh, uh, NBA told him he's going to play the national anthem. So they're back to playing the national anthem again. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on the, the whole whole kerfuffle? Um, well, okay. Uh, Leon hesitated just the right amount of time for me to jump in here. Uh, from a nationalism uh, standpoint, I'm not all broken up about not playing the national anthem and from its historical um, sources uh, related to wars, uh, you know, that we, you know, we talk about their validity there and, you know, why you would do that at a sporting event and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, you know, if Mark Cuban owns the team and, you know, I don't, I don't know how much control he, he has over what goes on in the stadium that his team is playing in. I think other people own the stadium and, and it is an NBA sanctioned game. So there, it seems like they have a, I guess, a higher authority. So it, it's, it, you know, for, for me, it's, it's kind of, I'm, I'm just sitting back kind of watching it. Uh, but like I say, I'm, I'm not, real busted up but it, when i'm at a game and the national anthem comes I've, I've got my hand over my heart and i'm you know mr patriot to to basically the constitution i i know it you know it's got a reference to to things other than the constitution i mean if they were pledging allegiance just to the constitution i would think hey you know what's wrong with that that's that's a good thing you should keep doing that but uh, i don't know so what do you think leon well, I mean, it is true the the uh, the Dallas Mavericks is a private organization, and it's also true the NBA, which which is the whole the overall league is is a private organization, yeah. and Correct. they can make policy as they see fit. Mm -hmm. However, however, okay, so this is where my probably my conservative part comes in here. However, I think there's value in our collective nature, okay. In the sense that, in the sense that, I think there should be something that binds us together, okay? That should bind us all together. We are all Americans, and we should be, okay? I wasn't born here. I came here when I was 20 years old, but I'm an American citizen, okay? And I feel connected to that flag. Oh, yes, it would have a history. I yes, you could point to all the things that the United States have done wrong overseas and, 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 and other places. Yes, all those things. It truly has happened. But what is the utopia that we are trying to create here by saying, oh, you know, the flag is no longer good. The national anthem is no good. We should disrespect it by taking a knee, by taking a knee when, when it's being played. Now, you think about that for a second. So this place that we call the United States of America, this place have only brought us bad things? What about all the good things that, that it have brought us? Shouldn't that count for something? So I think these people, especially these billionaires like Mark Cuban, should have a little bit of damn respect. And they should play the national anthem when they are games. And they should do it. And don't insult the people who are supporting their, their, their ventures. Because I think it's an insult not to play the national anthem in these places. So that's my conservative part and not my libertarian part. On the libertarian part, I could see the point. But no, we should be playing the national anthem. And I hope uh, the fans, if they decide not to, whenever they do, I hope the fans boycott the damn games. And let's see what they're going to do then. Yeah. Well, see, that's why we call them the last word in liberty. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I went first, probably because he let me go first. Probably because he knew better than to have me go second because he knew I would have just gone. <laughs> <laughs> but before before we before we leave this leave this topic though, there's one other thing, okay? Yeah. Mark Cuban was on in that video. He said he was on some show on ESPN, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. he was talking about all oh, the voices of the community is not being heard. I would like to know which voices he's talking about not being heard. Okay. I find it so idiotic, you wouldn't believe. Oh, there's systemic racism. There we go again. Systemic racism. Are people afraid to walk down the street? Yeah. I would like to. Who's these people he's talking about? Well, and, and this and is the reason for not playing the national anthem. That, that's kind of the crazy thing with all of this. And I think it goes back to uh, the, the picture we're showing right here now. And that's of Colin Kaepernick taking the knee. And so I want to give a, a little bit of a background to this because this uh, definitely led to a lot of the issues around uh, all of the national anthem kerfuffle, I guess, that we're having right now. So uh, to, to give you just a little bit of backstory. So 
essentially, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I recently heard on the uh, Mises had a, a podcast on this. So this is pretty good if you want to go look into it a little more. But essentially, the, the national anthem started getting played at baseball games during World War One and World War Two because uh, it, it was a patriotic thing and it really got the crowd excited. And so it was a positive thing. So they just kept doing it. And that's become a tradition since then, since uh, that time in baseball and the other sports that came along later have just, you know, adopted that as well uh, as, as they've gone on. But uh, recently with, uh, you know, some of the political unrest that we've had, um, we had the, the issue of Colin Kaepernick. Now, Colin Kaepernick, uh, they show him here in Time magazine taking the knee. Uh, and he was a football player doing this. And um, the, the big issue with uh, Colin Kaepernick is, um, you know, it, you know, he says he's doing it for the Black Lives Matter type of movement, you know, and, and so that's been a big impetus to that. Um, I, I do kind of question that a little bit. I mean, if you look at the timing of all this, I mean, uh, you know, he was very successful when he first started with the 49ers. They went to the Super Bowl, I believe, in 2013. Uh, no taking a knee back then and when he was successful in his career in 2014 no taking a knee when he was still relatively successful they come up to 2015 he's starting to fight for his starting job taking the bench <laughs> not, not necessarily the knee but taking the bench uh, at times and he's uh, sort of going back and forth and uh, battling with this uh, Blaine Gabarit for the starting job and then in uh, 2016 is when he first takes a knee when he's having trouble maintaining uh his starts uh and he starts sitting on the bench during the national anthem instead of standing with his team and then eventually he starts taking the knee on the field uh in that so you know the timing is you know i mean certainly there were things going on with protests about police before he started taking a knee uh but you know it's just it it is interesting you know i mean somebody who when they're successful this isn't an issue but when, when his career is waning suddenly you know it's uh uh it's racial injustice it yeah. becomes racial injustice <laughs> yeah but 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 anyway and so that kind of led in and trump got involved with all this they had the players supporting Colin Kaepernick taking a knee out there in the NFL and a lot of uh, <clears throat> Trump tried to weigh in. But this is where it all gets kind of uh, icky because, you know, if you're sitting here, this is a private business and you got, you know, people, uh, you know, playing the national anthem and somebody does want to stand, somebody doesn't. I mean, it's private business. I mean, one, if, if they're telling him, you know, hey, you're getting paid, <laughs> you're getting paid to stand. That's part of the deal. here. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't, you know, see. I don't think there's an issue there as far as I don't think you have the right to protest on company time. But right. uh, exactly. but, but aside from that, no. though, it, 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 it does kind of bring in, you know, well, I mean, are you also supposed to be forced to, uh, I guess, are you supposed to be forced to give certain, I, I, I don't know, patriotic pitches during company time? I don't, I don't know. I, anyways, you guys, you guys want to jump in on this issue? I know we've kind of done it a, a little bit, but. Yeah. Well, I, I may think it's it's not the brightest thing to wear a mask, uh, you know, uh, all, all around and stuff, you know. But when I'm uh, working, I, I put a mask on because it's company policy and the policy of the of our client, main client. So, uh, you know, I, I it's like a, that that goes against my personal freedom, right? My body, sure. my choice, yes. correct? I mean, as long as nobody innocent, uh, the, the thing about abortion, <laughs> abortion, abortion is my body, my choice. And so is wearing a mask, my body, my choice. But you might hurt someone innocent. Well, you mean like abortion? Maybe? No. OK, I'm, I'm off tracks. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I thought of a meme that I saw. I thought it was clever. And uh, th this is what happens when you have ADD. OK, you just you just go off on tangents and. Uh, and you get it, you get it eliminated by the censors and and the the, the people doing the cuts on on the video that we're going to put put out uh, here on YouTube. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the um, what was I think? I can't remember what I was talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> Go no, ahead. I, I, <laughs> it. I mean, it is it is company time. Okay, yeah. Colin Kaepernick is yeah. doing this on company time. All of these things kneeling is on company time. But when we are working in, 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 in private industry, and I have worked in private industry, there are certain things that I had to do because I work for the, the organization. Most important, I have to be there at a certain time. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. I can't get up in the morning and just say, I don't feel like yeah. going to work today and I'm not going to call in. I can't do that. And if I do that too often, I could be fired. Yeah. And if... Well, Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, according to uh, what was it? The uh, we we talked about this before, but that uh, uh, with the Smithsonian, uh, it was at African American uh, uh, Museum or whatever. They put yes. out a whole list of of things that are acting white, and apparently, you're saying showing up to work, uh, oh, yeah. you shouldn't have to do that anyway because that's just acting white. <laughs> 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 showing up on yes. time, apparently. Yes, yes, being on time, punctuality, punctuality is. Is 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 is, 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 part of, is part of all you guys white privilege, you yeah, know. Exactly. That you are, you are now you are yeah. now you have infected the rest of us with, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which which alone uh, that that whole idea. I mean, because the flip side is what you're supposed to think is so being late is a black trait, right? Yeah, you, yeah, right. That, that's what and you're if you supposed say that, to and think. If, and Tim, if you say that out loud, they'll call you racist. Okay? Oh yeah. If you say that. Oh out yeah, loud. But that that's exactly <laughs> what they're saying. They're saying I know, if, if, I know, if, but I'm telling you, I'm telling yeah. you, the hypocrisy will be that if if acting white is punctuality is acting white, mm -hmm. and then if I say, well, I'm gonna act black and I'm gonna come up whenever the hell I feel like it, yeah. and you turn around and say, well, you know, hey, you know, look at you, yeah. you're being black, you're being yeah. late, they're yeah. gonna call you a racist. Exactly, exactly. That's but but they're. Unless you identify as black, so I don't know if that's okay or not, but I, I, I've heard it's yeah. okay from the left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing about the libertarian podcasts in general is that we spend a lot of time pointing out the hypocrisy of the left, and, and we we kind of get to where we sound like broken records at times that some yeah. libertarians are, are making concerted efforts. I just heard one today in their podcast to, to avoid that. I'm not saying we should, cause I kind of like to bring it out <laughs> myself and Leon loves it. And so, you know, it's probably going to live on in this podcast, but, um, Boy, I tell you what, uh, there is no shortage of hypocrisy from the left. There's there's a lot from the right too, but there's no. I mean, the left just leaves us behind. Well, I, I got a quick hypocrisy thing for you. So uh, another thing yeah. that's come out of all this is not not they don't necessarily want to play the national anthem, but they want to play the black national anthem. And oh. I, I got to you know say okay, so okay, black national anthem. Maybe they play two songs, but. Why not? Isn't there maybe there's a Mexican national anthem? Maybe there's a Japanese <laughs> <laughs> national anthem. Maybe, maybe, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? Maybe there's. A, I mean, where does it stop, too? You know, I mean, I saw. So you know, as far well, as like you say, tying us together and stuff. I. Yeah. Well, what, so. what's the black national anthem? Is it the national anthem to rap, or is it with jazz? Yeah, it's, it's a song. It's a song called "Raise, Raise All Voices." Okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. But you know, but but you know, this this thing just goes back to this identity politics that the left plays, the Democratic Party in particular. You know, Team Blue using your vernacular, Jason. This just goes back there. Now, you give me one reason why why any American should be looking to say, oh, the only way I'm going to feel good, the only way I'm going to feel like an American is if we play the Black National Anthem. <laughs> What the hell is that supposed to mean? Seriously. <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to mean? It doesn't sound very inclusive, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but, uh, uh, we're about that point in the oh. show where, uh, you know, we're um, going to something silly that somebody said other than us. <laughs> so, uh, the, exactly. uh, our Knucklehead Noise Patrol. And so today for our Knucklehead Noise Patrol, uh, we have Hollywood weighing in on some something or other about uh, Trump, I guess, and and so they, they're always weighing in about Trump. So it's nothing new. But uh, Sean Penn said, uh, actor in Hollywood, said something uh, particularly kind of uh, knuckleheaded. Uh, he said, uh, uh, evangelical leaders should themselves be impeached by the Vatican if they themselves don't follow Nikki Haley's lead and clearly state. Uh, they should not have followed Satan, that's orange-haired Trump, just in case you're not, <laughs> Satan, into the bowels of hell. But perhaps they are too busy at sex parties. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> apparently he doesn't understand that evangelicals that don't listen to the Vatican, but... Evangelicals are mostly Protestants who have no connection to the Vatican. This idiot didn't even know that. 
Okay? <laughs> yes. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. The, the Vatican is connected to the Roman Catholic Church. The, the, this idiot didn't know. I was yeah. so shocked when I when I read that. I said, Sean Penn? Really? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, that, that's a good one, because that's a lack of understanding of all kinds of things. And I'm not sure about, the, about what these sex parties are he's talking he's about. He's talking about but... the, Lincoln, the Lincoln Project. The Lincoln Project oh. and, the, um, and the sex predator, um, John Weaver. Oh, hmm. so he, he was having sex parties, just one person with, with other no, people. No, the Lincoln Project yeah. is an anti-Trump. Is an anti, they are claimed to be Republicans. Oh. But they are anti-Trump. Okay, okay. Totally anti-Trump. But they had one of the co-founders who just, there's a big scandal ongoing, but him being a sex predator, and it, it, it seems to be true. He's a yeah. sex predator. And so the Lincoln uh, Project is about, to, um, is about to shut down. He was referring to that about the sex parties. That's what he was referring to. Oh, so, boy. All right. Well, I don't know. Uh, gosh. You know, if, but, if you have to have an excuse not to do something, sex going to the sex parties is probably one of the better excuses, you know. For, <laughs> like, <laughs> honey, I'm going to be late for dinner because I have a sex party. I'm not either good. You know, I just, I just wish, I'm sorry, Jason, you're going to say something? No, that's okay. You go ahead. I just, I just wish these celebrities will just shut their mouth they just they are just a bunch of morons, a bunch of idiots who teach us nothing. I wish you just shut them out. And if, if they, they they have some acting skills, some of them do. Sean Penn is not a bad actor, to be honest, and that kind of stuff. But he has he, he and Chelsea Handler and, and some of these other people, they, they, they just talk this about this crap that gets us nowhere. I wish you just shut up and just quietly do the, the thing that they 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 they're trained to do or they have, they're born doing or whatever. Just go do what you you need to do. Just shut up about your about everything yeah. else. Yeah, because if there's any group that goes to sex parties, it's Hollywood for crying. Yes, out loud. exactly. <laughs> Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Jeez. Oh, well, sorry, clearly. was that racist? <laughs> well, clearly, Sean Penn is leading Hollywood and acting the fool. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, but uh, I guess we'll we'll wrap this one up then on that note. But uh, uh, thanks so much for joining us again for another uh, episode of Knuckleheads yes. of Liberty. You can catch us at uh, libertariancounterpoint.com. And uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 This is Gail Morgan with Libertarian Counterpoint Productions. Knuckleheads of Liberty, Monday nights at 5.30 on Channel 17. Libertarian Counterpoint on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 17. Also, you may catch our shows on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media. Once again, thank you for watching Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.